You might be looking at the medium to large car category for Drive Car of the Year 2021 and thinking, what's going on there? It's a bit of everything. And look, to be honest, so will we. This is a difficult category because Australians just don't buy these cars in the volumes they used to. Medium and large cars used to be the staple for the Australian car market. So this year, it's a bit of a mix and match. Behind me, we've got the Kia Stinger. It's a rear wheel drive turbocharged performance car. We've got the Skoda Scout. This thing here is an all rounder that does everything people would ask of it and it's good value for money. And then of course, we've got the segment favorite in the medium segment anyway, the Toyota Camry, hybrid specification here. It almost feels like a large car. This is gonna be a tough segment for the judges to sort out. Let's get into it. This segment is an interesting conundrum in 2021 for a few reasons. First of all, buyers have walked away from both the medium and large passenger car segments in big numbers in the last decade. And secondly, the lines have been blurred on exactly what is a medium or large car in terms of physical size, and as such, the judges have decided to combine the two. Our finalists represent a strong field though, with the Kia Stinger, Skoda Superb and Toyota Camry going head to head. Judges will look at space and practicality, of course, as well as fuel efficiency and general driving behaviour. Performance on track will be less critical than the way the finalists perform under brakes and during emergency manoeuvres. If you're buying in this segment, two things are apparent. You've probably considered an SUV, and so practicality will be important. And as such, the judges will look at second row space, general cabin ergonomics and storage, and the size of the boots as closely as they will the way these cars drive. The Kia Stinger starts from $49,550 for the four-cylinder entry-level model, while the range-topping V6 GT starts from $60,990. All Stingers get a 10.25-inch infotainment screen, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, satellite navigation, DAB Plus digital radio, LED combination headlamps and full-width LED taillights. There's now also a larger 4.2-inch driver information display keyless entry and start, and a full suite of safety features, including AEB with pedestrian and cyclist detection, lane keep assist, lane following assist, and rear occupant alert. The Stinger gets a five-star ANCAP safety rating, Kia's seven-year unlimited kilometre warranty, and a cap price servicing scheme. While the superb sedan might appear to be the smartest pick for this segment, the judges actually prefer the wagon, and that's the variant we're testing here. Pricing starts from $40,690 with either front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive models available. The priciest wagon is the 206 TSI all-wheel drive Sportline, which starts from $62,090. The Superb is well equipped across the range with standard features including three-zone climate control, leather seat trim, heated front seats, a full suite of active safety including adaptive cruise control with traffic jam assist, a 9.2-inch touchscreen, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, DAB Plus Digital Radio, and various options packages on top of the standard equipment list. Superb is a five-star ANCAP rated vehicle and there's a five-year unlimited kilometre warranty and cap price servicing schedule as well. The Toyota Camry starts from $30,990 for the regular petrol engine, while the hybrid range starts from $33,490. From the most affordable right to the top of the range, Camry is well specified in standard trim. Equipment includes a 7-inch touchscreen, 4.2-inch driver's display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto support, auto-leveling headlights, digital radio, the full Toyota SafetySense suite of active safety aids, a rear-view camera with moving guidelines, and a 5-star ANCAP safety rating from 2017. The Kia Stinger is the most expensive entrant into our combined medium and large sedan segment. Once you're inside, you're expecting a high quality interior as a consequence. You definitely get that. You've got this nice stitched dash, these sporty leather bolstered seats, as well as lashings of aluminium trim throughout the cabin. However, if you're a young family or you've even got young babies, be careful with this car. That sloping roof line makes child seats really difficult to use, especially in a rearward facing position. The Skoda Superb is a great choice for those who want an awesome boot, but don't want an SUV. It comes with a wagon body type, which makes it unique among our three finalists. Overall, the interior quality is great in this car and it's jam packed with those clever Skoda touches. However, it is wildly more expensive than a Toyota Camry and doesn't even offer more room in the second row, the quintessential hallmark of a medium sized car. 
The Toyota Camry used to be a pragmatic family car of choice. It's since been superseded by SUVs, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Up in the front row, I feel very comfortable, the driving position is natural, and I've got good visibility all round. There's heaps of space in the second row as well. Where it does fall down, however, is in terms of infotainment and general perception. It does feel a little bit low rent compared to others in the segment. The judges spent plenty of time on the dynamic testing loop with the three finalists, assessing which felt the least like a big car to drive. While size is important to buyers in this segment, the judges felt it's also crucial that a large car doesn't feel floaty and boat-like to drive. General balance is weighed up as well as steering feedback, braking consistency and ride comfort. A proper road loop is used to determine the latter, with the judges looking for a chassis that will settle quickly and comfortably when it's disturbed by poor surfaces. Much of the testing is also conducted four up to get genuine feedback on comfort and space in the second row. While outright pace isn't key in this segment that leans more towards practicality than performance, the judges did look for the sedan that most enjoyed highway speeds. Like I said at the outset, this segment is particularly difficult for 2021. If you want a big performance sedan, you're going to buy the Kia Stinger. If you're a family buyer who wants the most practicality, you're going to buy the Superb Scout. But Overall, our defending champ has done it again. The Toyota Camry, again in hybrid specification, is the best medium to large car for 2021, and it's an all-rounder. That's why it wins this category. It's about value for money, specification, standard equipment, all of those things. Plus, it's a pretty good thing to drive. Doesn't look too bad either. This is our best medium to large car for 2021. The Camry really is the best all-rounder in this field. It's a medium-sized car that offers the generous space of a large one. There's a versatile interior with plenty of comfort and an effortless drivetrain that even has the option of hybrid, which all combine to deliver a compelling ownership experience. The Camry is stylish and comfortable, it's as sporty as it will ever need to be, and it's genuinely efficient in the real world. Testing the Camry Ascent Sport Hybrid with a week of typical case motoring involving traffic, highways and easy suburban loops returned 4.7 litres per 100 kilometres. The Superb and the Stinger both feel at least a few notches above the Camry in terms of premium cabin quality, but the judges recognise that the Toyota has that carved from stone solidity about it. While the Toyota Camry is the winner here, all three finalists offer a compelling counterpoint for the rush to SUVs. Click on subscribe and hit like if you've enjoyed this video because it really does help. And of course, head to drive.com.au for more reviews and all of our 2021 Drive Car of the Year content.